Are you tired of political boxes? Let's break free. Listen up, yo, because I'm going to show you how I dish party labels and got my head right. I broke out of the box. I came out the matrix and you can too. Join me. We're going to redefine politics. By watching this video, you're going to gain some clarity. You're going to see that this is a matrix, that this is BS, that they're trying to put you inside of a box. And you're going to say, okay, I don't like this. All right? And you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna finally understand what the game is. And you're going to think outside the game. Political labels don't fit. Never once was I interested in politics just to be interested in politics. I know that's okay for some people, because some people, it's like a game, like Dungeons and Dragons or Monopoly. What kind of games have you played? Sorry. Uh, Battleship. Like, th these people. There are people who look at politics like a game. Those are people that have money. And to them, they have, you know, it's just fun times to like be involved in politics. It's like chess. And, and, and to be honest, most of that idea, because I don't even know those people, that came from me watching movies. And a lot of what we think is real <coughs> is actually just us watching movies, internalizing these characters. When we've never really met those characters or people that are actually uh, following along those types of roles as those players the, the way that they, you know, are depicted. I never met these people. <coughs> I never met someone who, who played these types of political games, but I imagine they may exist, okay? But those people are not us, right? We're people that work for a living. We're people, we're people that work for a living. We come from families where we watch other people work for a living. That's where we come from. But what we do have, besides politics, before there was politics, we had issues, so for me, let me let me explain. For me, when I was a teenager, right, I lived in, I was born in Washington, D.C. I lived in Maryland, uh, Prince George's County, Maryland, <coughs> right on the D.C. line. And um, I moved to a place called Riverdale, Maryland. In Riverdale, Maryland, there's a lot of opportunity to like meet a lot of different types of people, right? Um, but I lived in a black community, and... Um, there was white communities that were still around. This is for this is before gentrification became like a thing, uh, totally taking over D.C., Maryland-type area. And there were places you could not go. I mean, you could go. It wasn't like a sundown town. You could go to certain places in Maryland, but you best believe some of those towns, they were going to pull you over as soon as they saw you because they racial profile very heavy. And for those who are from Prince George's County, Maryland, we're talking about like Greenbelt. I'm talking about like Laurel. I'm talking about like Columbia. All right? So you know what I'm talking about if you're from the area. Berwyn Heights. This type of area where if you pull up, just know it's better to take the long way, bro. Take the beltway around because they're going to pull you over when they see your black ass. So... When I started working for a newspaper called Capital Spotlight, uh, once I once I got in, once once the the editor of the black it was a local black newspaper, um, small circulation, fifty five sixty five thousand, um, small paper, black paper, black owned, black focused. I was talking about things that I was experiencing, things that I went through, and I had a column. I talked about what was happening in my community. I talked about police brutality. I talked about racial profiling. These are the things I wanted to talk about. These are things I knew about. I was not talking about politics. I was talking about life. And that's what politics was. I didn't know that's what the name of it really was. It was just issues. See, what happens is we don't choose a party. We choose an issue. And then we kind of back into our parties like what party is less damaging or more in line with whatever my issues are, whatever, whatever I'm trying to get, whatever, whatever I see a problem with or whatever I'm trying to get away from or whatever I'm trying to get to. And that'll be like one issue. But all the rest of the stuff that that party's about, you may or may not agree with it. That makes sense. 
So that's sort of like my journey. And as I began to develop, as I moved forward, as I left that newspaper, as I built a family, as I did all the things I did, as I, when I arrived here on, on, online creating content, I wasn't talking about politics. I was talking about issues. I was talking about issues that impact black people, that impact the black community. That's what I was doing. You know, I was talking about cop shootings, police brutality, discrimination, uh, trying to be successful, uh, family, relationship, uh, the things that I knew about and the things I saw wrong, breaking events, culture, these types of things, breaking news, right? So I got into politics when I realized, and I got into it reluctantly, I only got into politics when I realized that, yo, there are things I want changed in my community that I can't change just by talking about it. Like, we're going to have to do something. And to do something, we're going to have to organize or work together, get the word out. We might have to use this thing called politics because we need a community behind this. We need more people behind these changes. When I saw Freddie Gray get his spine broke, I said, hey. When I saw Tamir Rice get killed at that park, and I visited that park in Ohio, I wanted to see the place where they shot this kid. So me and Mrs. Black went to Ohio. While we were in Ohio, we went to that park. I stood at the very spot. Because I cared about the issue of this young man's life. I didn't care about Democrats or Republicans. I didn't care about Trump, or at that time it was, you know, Hillary trying to run. I cared about what happened to Tamir Rice. I didn't care about the nonsense, the noise. I cared about Ferguson. I cared about Michael Brown. I cared about Breonna Taylor. The list goes on. I saw Deanna Jefferson. Sandra Bland. These are the issues that I cared about. These are the things that moved me. These are the things I knew about. I'd had, I had, I experienced police brutality. I experienced racial profiling. I experienced harassment. These are things I lived. I didn't need somebody telling me about what it meant who had never experienced it. And then, so Tim, why didn't you become a Republican? I didn't become a Republican because I didn't feel like they had lined up with what I believed in. They were, I feel like they were the opposite of what the issues that I wanted to tackle, they were the opposite side of that. They were like, they supported the cops, no matter who it was who got killed, no matter if the child if it was 13 or not, at a park in daytime with a toy. They still supported the cop who blew his head off. They still supported the cops, the cops that killed Freddie Gray in the back of a van, a rough ride, intentionally not strapping this kid down, probably broke his spine before he even got in the truck. He couldn't walk when they, they had to carry him and put him in the van. But they supported it anyway. So there was the so I saw Republicans as the opposite of that major issue. But there were other things and other issues that were less important to me that I didn't see them on the opposite side of. But in America, you gotta fit into such a box. You can't, you feel like in America that you can't do a cart, a la carte. You can't pick what you want, it ain't a buffet. You can't say, okay, I want this policy. I want, I want gun rights, and I wanna protect citizens from discrimination. And I want to end police brutality. But we should be able to pray if we want to. You should be able to say Merry Christmas. You should be able to marry who you want to marry. But, uh, I don't know. Um, there is a thing between a man, there's a difference between a man and a woman, anatomically. <laughs> uh, and we should be able to buy homes wherever we want to buy homes. Uh, you shouldn't be able to discriminate against a whole race of people for 300 years and then say, sorry, have a good life and give us nothing to start with. And then people say, you want free stuff. There should be reparations. 
But this group doesn't believe in that at all. This group says they do, but they really don't want to talk about it, so what, what good is that? They don't want to fight for it. They just know that I they know I want it, so they don't want to say negative, but they don't want to they don't want to fight for it for me. For us. But they know they can't win an election without me. So so politics to me is really about issues. Who's less adversarial? Who's who has less resistance to the issues I care about? And that's who you kind of pick and go with. But at the end of the day, are you really with that party? And that's really where I'm going with this. Are you really a Democrat? You're not a Democrat. Your parents were Democrats. They believed in something, and then they tried to fit themselves into a mold because it became a part of their identity. But if you step back from it, there's things that they were conservative about and things they were liberal about. It's not red or blue. Sometimes it's gray. Sometimes it's gray, man. Because we are human beings, and we have nuance. No, I don't think you should be able to just be able to shoot somebody. We get into an argument with them. But I think you should be able to protect yourself when somebody comes to your house. Gray area. <clears throat> Is that red or blue? Just being a human. Gray. Right? <clears throat> Do I think women should make more money an hour? I don't know. But should they be paid a fair wage just like a man? Yeah. They're doing the same job. <clears throat> Doing the same job, get the same pay. Is that red or blue? I don't know how I feel. Who's closer to that? Oh, it's close. Okay. Get what I'm saying? That's sort of how we come up with our political leanings. Someone said, Tim Black, I like what you say about this or about that, but you still got some lefty in you. Dude, I got policies that I agree. I believe in. I believe we should all have health care. For some reason, that's a lefty thing. I don't understand it because if you get older in life and you start losing people, you realize some of those people wouldn't have died if they had health care, if they weren't afraid to use it. And they were afraid to use it, let's face it, because it costs money. Now, I don't know when that became a lefty idea that people who pay into society, who pay taxes, who live in a country, the richest country on earth, should have health coverage. If poor countries can have health coverage for their people, why can't the richest country not have it? Because of corporations. Why is that a lefty idea? People idea. But it has been grouped into a lefty idea, which is somehow grouped to Democrats who actually support those corporations just like the Republicans do. They got just as much corporate cash floating on the Democratic side as they do on the Republican side, sometimes from the same exact entities. Trump said when he paid off politicians, he paid off Republicans and Democrats. It's probably really why they hate his ass. But we all know Trump's a whole different creature, so we're not going we're not gonna go into that right now. But what I'm saying is, it's not just blue and red, it's gray too. And that's what I've experienced. That's, that's where I've been. I don't know where you've been. Where have you been? What have you seen? Think about the issues you care about. Think how you ended up backing into a party that was closer to that particular issue. If you would say, hey, I grew up with guns. I grew up hunting. You may feel like you got to be a Republican because of that. But in reality, eh, you don't care if somebody... If two lesbians or two gay people or bi person get well, if they get married, why would you care? You know, you may not give a damn about that. You care about being able to keep your guns and keeping your own, being able to protect you and your family. That's how you grew up. That's part of your culture, and you want that to continue. But there's things about being that person that don't fit into being Republican for you, or or for or you being yourself that don't fit into Republican talking points. You may not feel that America should dominate the world and have 800 bases in over 100 countries across the globe. You may feel like that's a waste of time and resources. We don't need to do that. But if you're a Republican, you support that because that's what Republicans do. But you personally may not ride with that, may not be who you are. You may not see that as your world outlook about the way the world should be. If you could wave a magic wand, that may not be what you want. 
But since you backed into the Republican Party because you support having guns, or you're right to have a gun, if you want to, you end up being called a Republican. You end up calling yourself a Republican. And all I'm saying is, you're not. You are you. And you got a couple policies or issues that you care about. That's it. So part of my reason for doing this is this, this, this topic, covering this topic, is that I feel that people are being backed into corners and putting themselves into boxes due to the power of these parties and the limited number of parties forces you into the box, these constraints and the division that we have. Most of it is just because we don't have a lot of options. And these labels may or may not even line up with what we really think. Like, there are people that say, Tim, you voted for Biden, who don't know I never voted for Biden. But they think because I don't care who marries who, that I voted for Biden because Biden is a, is a, I'm about to call him a Republican. Because he's a Democrat and they believe in marriage or they, they made that one of their issues for gay marriage. They think I supported Biden when I didn't. And some of that has to do with race too. They think of because I'm black. In the same way, I said, well, I can't be a Republican because Republicans, remember those towns that if I pulled into them, I drove through those towns, I got pulled over automatically because of racial profiling? I don't think those were a bunch of liberals. I think those were a bunch of conservatives who loved cops who were pulling me over. In those towns, they called the cops when they saw two or more, two or three or more black people in a car. Just out of instinct. Because we got to be up to something bad because we are black. And black people are bad. So, but at the end of the day, when I got a little bit older and I realized as time went on, and it took, I'm not talking about really being in the politics, I realized that progressives are bad too. I mean, I had progressives accuse me of all types of shit because somebody said something and they said, oh, I bet that is Tim because he's black. They didn't say, oh, he's black, I believe that. But they did believe that because I'm black. And because a non-black person said, this guy did this thing, they just believed it because they were racist and are racist. And they also called themselves progressives. Because that's what, cause, and so, boom, shattered the belief system of Democrats and Republicans. You can be racist and be Republican or be racist and be Democrat. You can support gay marriage and be black or be white or be or be Democrat or be Republican or be but independent or whatever. Doesn't define you and you are not definable by a party label. Part of the problem is the media landscape. It's the way the media is constructed. They put you in buckets because they gotta they gotta cater to a certain audience. And they want that certain audience to get a certain diet, a certain type of content. Because you can't just talk about anything. You can't just cover any story. You got to have a certain type of vantage point from your stories. Because you got to have some consistency in your coverage, in the type of content that you put out. So a news company, particularly a news company that's built on profits, has to cater to a certain type of demographic. And then they're going to program you by continually telling you what these types of people think. And more importantly, they're going to demonize the other side that makes you want to back closer to that party, even if, or that ideology, even if you don't agree with that ideology, lock, stock, and barrel. Totally. Completely. Fully. But this other side, the other side over there, has been so demonized, has been so put down, has been put into such a box that you see them as a caricature of something undesirable and anti to your issues that you back closer to this particular ideology just because you feel like there's nowhere else to go. Most of the people I met, they only are saying vote Biden because they feel like you got no choice. It's either that guy or that guy. And when I say Cornell West, it don't register. When I say Jill Stein, it don't register. If you say RFK, well, he's sort of like still. Come on. Still a Democrat. But if I say RFK, they, they, 
that may register more because of the name. Get what I'm saying? So they're backing away from what they say they disagree with, not so much they agree with this other thing. There are Trump supporters that support Trump just because they can't stand Biden. And they want they think Biden's the wrong way. So they think, well, Trump may not be the best way, but he's the best way we got right now. It's better than Biden. Don't go that way. So that's sort of how they've drawn their conclusions, why they've come up with what they've come up with, the, the, the sides that they're on. But it doesn't really define who they are, man. It doesn't really, it does not truly embody them. It's what the closest thing to the particular issue that they most support. So there are people that want to end wars. They think war is the worst thing on the planet, and the closest party they thought to that was Democrats. Now, Democrats have supported every war, right along with the Republicans. But the way they talk about it has been a little different up until recently. They used to pretend. Now they, they kind of stopped pretending. Kind of stopped pretending there, right? That they're really different on that. But there are people that thought the Democrats were Closer to a war, uh, a peaceful, uh, a peace first type party. They weren't. They seemed that way and they were in the past, but they are not now. You have no party. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You have no party. You think you have a party. You don't have a party. If you say, I'm with the party that's non racist, you don't have a party. You may say, Trump's more racist than Biden. Or you may think Biden's more racist than Trump. But those two people are not the party. And whatever you think about those people, whether you like them or you detest them, there are all types of people in those parties. And those parties don't just stand for one thing. There will be things you agree with and things you disagree with. But what I want you to take a look at and want you to realize, all things desirable and undesirable are both places, and that this party system is garbage. And you are fitting into a box that you don't even want to be in. You just feel like you got no choice but to be in it. You do have a choice. You could be party less and just focus on the issues. And now we can move forward trying to tackle issues instead of trying to align with parties because that's where they do the division because it makes money for them because that's how they get their power. But it, it might, look, the way I see it, the perfect not the perfect. A better country would be a country with no parties. If you like what this guy has to say or you like what this lady has to say, vote for him. Who cares what party they support? It's all about the issues that they're gonna that they're gonna implement or the, or the legislation that they're gonna implement or the orders that they're gonna sign or where they stand on those issues in parallel with what you believe and what you think would be a better country and what your interests are, right? And then that's who you go with. But screw the parties. Screw the parties because that's a game, man. That is a box. That's a jail cell. And that don't help us. It don't help us. It helps them. It helps them do their demographics when they try to make their content so they can get your eyeballs so they can run the ads on their content. But at the end of the day, does that get you closer to what you want? For your family? Really? Our voices matter. We need to step outside the boxes that they have created for us. And realize that, yes, we are more nuanced. We have different layers. Things are not cut and dry. It's not left or right. It's bigger than that. It's more moves than that. There are more options. Politics is a la carte. Because life is a la carte. You pick and choose. No one's all one way. They just want you to be. Because that dwindles down the options and makes it easier to sell it to you. 
It's easy to sell to you if you're large or medium or small. They don't even have three sizes. They only got two. So either the, the sleeves are going to be way up here or way over your arm. Because we're all irregular. Because we all have different issues that we care about. And different amounts of caring. And we have different interests. And we don't need to put ourselves in a box because... We're bigger than a box. And if we allow them to put us in a box or allow them to force us to put ourselves in a box to benefit them, we only hurt ourselves. We only hurt ourselves. So I say advocate for the issues that you care about. I advocate for the issues I care about. And I'll leave room and space and an open mind for us to talk about the rest. Because we may agree on the rest. Doesn't mean I'm going to take away, I'm going to walk away from what I believe. It just means I got the issue I care about. I got these issues I care about. And these issues that you care about, let's talk about them. But let's not jump into corners and fight each other over someone else's party and someone else's made up idea of what that means. Because at the end of the day, I just want to drive through your town, baby. At the end of the day, I just want to go see my friends, baby. At the end of the day, I deserve to be free, just like you do. And that ain't got nothing to do with parties. That's got to do with people. You don't have a political party, you just think you do. And why do you think that? Because they want you to. And why do they want you to? You're easier to control that way. And of course, money. My name is Tim Black. This has been another edition of Calling It Out. I'll see you on the next one. Remember, don't let nobody take your cornbread. It's a new day. If you enjoy that content, click subscribe and turn on all your notifications. Tim Black is for the people. See you on the next video. And remember, the truth doesn't need motivation.